good this Saturday morning. Home Wizards, Cindy Dole, Eric Stromer. We'd love to help improve your home and improve your life. And Eric, you're in Alabama getting ready to do a home show today, eh? That's right. You know, and, and I'll tell you, good news. What's even, the good news? Even here, and you know, because I, I know that you were down in Orlando last week and it was doing well, better, thriving. Here as well, the the attendance is definitely up, according to all the folks promoting the event, and that's a great sign for the economy, isn't it? It really is. It really is. In fact, uh, there was a survey that our, our friends at Better Homes and Gardens um, did tied um, to uh, the Builders Show last week, and uh, they found that, yes, people are, uh, even though we're still a little cautious, uh, we are looking to, to spend some money on our home and maybe doing things that still are a little on the smaller side, you know, or we're doing things to our kitchens and our bath, but maybe, you know, it isn't a whole complete remodel, you know? Exactly. You know, and, and thing, to that point, things just simple, uh, you know, for example, like trying to figure out ways to make your home more healthy Yes, is a great first start, isn't it? It is. It doesn't cost anything often, right? Um, so let's exactly. talk about some of the things, because we were talking about you know, the dryer, right? And several listeners that emailed back and said, thanks so much. I've never, not only like changed the, the lint, you know, I, I clean out the lint in the, in the front of the dryer, but you were telling everybody to go to behind the back of the dryer. I was, yeah. And, you know, I, I have moved in and out probably five or 800 dryers in my life, you know, in terms of remodeling homes and laundry rooms and all that kind of stuff. And I would say at least 60 to 70 percent of them are the hoses are disconnected from the machine and that lint is just blowing randomly into that space and then consequently blowing into your home. And and what people don't realize is that stuff is incredibly flammable, all the lint from the clothing. So it's a real good idea to use that as a as a first a first stage check alert when it comes to the safety of the home. So what would happen if you left all that lint just kind of flying around behind your dryer? I mean, let's say you've already taken the lint out of that uh, the little lint screen. That's the easy part. But there's stuff flying around the back. What's going to happen? Well, apparently it can burst into flames down the road if you're not careful. And then the other thing is that. You know that that stuff blowing in your in your home indoor air environment is is going to do nothing but be an irritant on the lungs, and it's just dusty all the time. So, you know, it's a, again, it's just a great idea to to police that you know every couple of weeks and just look back there and make sure it's still connected because you know a lot of time the washing machine will be vibrating so much that it'll touch the dryer and then that'll start vibrating a bit when the spin cycles occurring and you can really get into that dislodging of that hose in the back of the machine. So they they do sell some amend, amending kits to those things that have a little bit easier of a system that that clasps around the the vent hose and that's always the biggest problem. You can't you can't get a a grip on on the hose where it connects to the machine so people just take the short way out and They'll throw like you know duct tape or masking tape to try and hold it together, but you do really need that clamp mm-hmm. that, they, that they sell with it. So make sure you do that the right way. And if we aren't handy, should we just have a, an appliance repair person yes, help us with you, that? You yeah. could do you could do that, but I suggest it's very challenging to get into those areas sometimes. So the best thing to do is pull. You open up your dryer door and then you you pull the dryer you know back and forth very slowly like for, you know a little bit to the left and then a little bit to the right and vice versa so that you start to inch it out away from the wall and then if you are of the mindset that you can actually I couldn't do it today because my hip is out somehow I can't even walk I feel like an old pirate <laughs> but if, but if you feel spry and 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 energetic and you've just had a delicious cup of coffee. Then you get up on the washing machine and get back behind the dryer and then bring yourself a Phillips head screwdriver and you can use some of that vent tape, which is silver. It's almost like aluminum foil that has mm. adhesive on it. Mm-hmm. And that's actually a great thing to connect the, the hose to the, the metal aspect to that vent in the back of the dryer. And and speaking bring of... A, and also bring a vacuum. Get a buddy. Oh, good. A have vac- somebody have a, a shop, shop vac, vac or shop a vac- vacuum cleaner with a hose attachment. Make sure you get that all out of there. I tell seat. you, that, that shop vac is a, a handy thing to have if you don't own one. I think that's something that you should have in your garage. I well, totally agree. Don't you think? Agree. Yes. And, you know, they also can double as leaf blowers. You know, if you if you put the hose in the other, uh, other uh, area of the vacuum, it'll blow stuff out of a corner in a storage area, for example. And you know so what else you can do with them? Clean your car. And you know what else? Uh, put it on your back and then no, make a no. You can find that diamond ring that went down the gar- down the drain. You've, you've used this tip before. You basically put a nylon uh, 
uh, sock of some kind over the hose. You know, you told me about that. And you that's turn an it amazing, on. That's yeah, a great idea. and it'll suck up whatever went down the drain, and it doesn't go all the way into the shop vac, but it just holds it tight like a magnet. Yeah. And now you've you've saved the day. It's an old plumber. Great trip. idea. Plumber and trip. You know, and you know, it's it, again too. Uh, speaking to the plumbing. If you have a clogged sink, there's this thing called the P trap that's yeah, right yes. on the bottom. That you just have to put a bucket underneath that, unscrew those two uh, uh, devices on the on the U, the top of the U on both sides with a pair of channel locks or large pliers, and then you just let that drop into the bucket. And usually that's the the origin of your clogged drain. And then if you want to go one step further, you can use the shop back and just suck all that stuff out of the pipe. Great. Now, you were talking about the hazard of fires uh, with in the laundry room with the dryer, and it's still been kind of chilly at night, and it's nice to get a little fireplace going. What about the chimney and chimney safety and, and that buildup of, of creosote? Yes, you bet. So if you're, if you're burning, uh, especially a wood-burning fireplace, and even a little bit to, when it comes to gas fireplaces, that also is, is flammable, and you want to make sure that that is not so overwhelmingly built up that, again, it is a safety issue. So a good way to tell is just to shine a flashlight up in there. Look look up when you put your head in, in the fireplace itself. Obviously, make sure there's no fire going unless you want to roast your head. <laughs> and then look straight up, and you, you may want to have some safety glasses on while you're doing that because when you look up, there's a tendency to have some of that stuff fall down when you're poking around with your hand to just double check. So the way you would know that there's too much would be if you can put your hand up on the brick surround in the fireplace and the chimney, mm. and it's just black immediately upon looking at your hand after you touch it, then you may want to get a chimney sweep mm. to come Good and idea. take care of that. Yep. Yeah, and maybe put put uh, the soundtrack to Mary Poppins on while you're. Well, you're doing I would. That. <laughs> I, I, whenever I'm doing. Chimney we'll step work, in I'm time. Doing, yeah. Jim Chimney. Uh, yeah. Me and, me and Dick Van Dyke. Uh, how about then, uh, You know, I do a broom dance too. I, I, you know, it's like, very handy. I love that. Uh, the menacing mold issue is something that, again, uh, you know, you, you worry about. And I, I went to the gym last night, and I uh, I could smell. Yeah, we like mold. to help you get Isn't things that weird? started. I mean, I just, before you begin that like project, you're going moist. What damp. should I do? Like there was a What's my inspiration? And it What's makes my motivation? Cindy you Dole, Eric Stromer. This is Home Wizards, where we love to help you breathing figure problems that out. and allergies. Erica, you're joining and me from Alabama. Yeah, and How I, you know, I was doing the so same thing. I was oh, so far so good. Alabama. I've so far seen the airport. And after I came up from doing a couple of strokes, I did go to a. I looked to the either side. It felt yeah, like there right. were river food? people bathing. Well, I had a delicious <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, River people. Sometimes it just okay. gets... And the guy that I, I was with said, we used to, we used to go ahead and, and that was roadkill. When you do we smell that, so I ain't going to pay $33 for no hand. You know, yeah. a, a cleaner so, that's so a you had the hand, enough, hand huh? That's a lot I did, of feet it was actually delicious. And it tasted like chicken. So if we... As it pertains to your own home, you definitely... You want to make sure that whenever you're smelling any of that, that moldy smell... Damp sitting out over the fact that we have asbestos going to either be a leak behind and, your uh, Like maybe in your laundry room you smell it, maybe your bathroom you smell it. I mean, you, it's totally it's recognizable, you know right? You know it. it. You know it, and, and it's not a coincidence and so You don't know that what the safe level is. Leak. There's so no what you known do is put safe your hand level. On the back and it's all about those fibers like, example, that can get into the air. Yeah, there's such little fish hooks and stuff out. Just put your hand on the back wall. If it feels damp and cool, chances are that you embed themselves in your lungs and then it's over about a 30-year period. That would be a scenario where you want to bring the plumber out and, and, and uh, you know, you know, open up that wall and really make sure that that's not leaking too much. Because ultimately, with all that leaking water, you're going to get dry rot. Let's take a little fear out of it. Having said that, and when it comes to mold, had the worst... Uh, growth luck with that our smoke wall happens to be like the work very best shipyards number one literally you know growing the medium stuff up with their hands and so oh, really? bundling yeah, it, it, it plasters nothing compared to molds or compared to drywall so if you have wet drywall, you, have you definitely want to get rid of it. Incredible amount of exposure. It's pretty easy if it's in your attic. Mm -hmm. Once you and once you some get the people use it as insulation. Mm -hmm. It's just a big, large four, four by eight sheets that are difficult to negotiate. But it's not going to get into the air. You want to take that on. You can cut those in half at the or it'll fit in your car. Okay, so that because that's why I'm seriously I'm haunted by this because we had our our furnace guy go up and give us a little tune up. So he was crawling around in there. So I'm thinking, oh no, did he somehow disturb? 
disturb the sure fibers that, you know, as he releases the fibers. You know, the, he may have, if, if and again, have it's an probably exhaust contained fan in a bathroom, and if you are, probably your if you number one reason for example, there are a smell. couple other things mm-hmm. that are and maybe it might be a little a good more idea dangerous to put a fan in the doorway. That would be and put it pre nineteen sixty seven essentially linoleum tile out of that room you know, after you take the, a shower. The ones that snap in half. It's a heck yeah. of a lot better than that are rigid when you demo them. Those yeah. are not great. Well, when we come back, those, uh, those you know, something that's been freaking me out is when every time our furnace goes on, we had our uh, a furnace uh, you repair guy wanna, go up in the know, attic, and he goes, you know you guys have asbestos up there. And, you know, everyone, know, well, everyone does that's had a home built before, what, 1990. But the thing is, if it's left undisturbed, you're probably okay. But still now, every time, I'm now I come obsessing. The furnace comes on, I'm like, oh, my gosh, asbestos is coming. I'm breathing. Yeah, and then, the, and then those mesothelioma <laughs> commercials. Oh, no. Too, yeah, area. so when we come so back, I, we're going to talk about what do you, you know, that's another that thing about making your home healthy. Should you worry about that in your attic? And what a, else from a room to room? You're listening to Home Wizards. Yeah, Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole on KFWB News Talk 90. And then they'll come out and they'll put on the hazmat suits and they'll quarantine up. Shake, shake, shake. At least. I mean, it could be thousands, right? And, and I mean, I know it's important to have a professional asbestos contractor if you are going to have it taken out. But you wonder if they're just trying to incite fear, you know, and well, if you're I better. Think there, I think it, it, there is a little bit of that. But again, but to our listeners, you know, if, if, it's, if it's up in an attic and you can't identify it, it, chances are it's probably not even asbestos. A lot of the guys like to crawl around in attics. They also may or may not know, and they're they're probably saying, "Oh man, you might have it up there," just because they're scared and they haven't done their due diligence to know what is and what isn't asbestos. Mm-hmm. The thing that's really really bad that people haven't been talking about much, but my cousin is a geologist for the United States government, and the thing that's really bad is this thing called vermiculite, and that looks like pink popcorn. And if you see that up in an attic, you definitely want to have that uh, taken out of your house because that is, is about 20 times more potent in terms of doing immediate damage to you if you inhale it. So you'll you'll start seeing those lawsuits come out at some point in the next 20 years. And if you do, I mean, regardless, it's probably a good idea not to store boxes in the attic, right? right. Because then you're, exactly. not, then you're just not going to be exposing yourself to whatever is up there. Just don't, you know, don't let kids get up there and yeah, play in exactly. the attic. But, but again, you know, be careful because insulation generally isn't an issue at all. It's just the things that are sur- like surrounding uh, heat, heat or air conditioning, old, old pipes coming up out of the out of the heating system, for mm-hmm. example, that are wh- like white or gray in color that look like almost a cast mm-hmm. that you would have on a broken arm. That's the material that if you break that, it's not a great idea to, to start breathing that stuff in. But again, if it's just sitting there in a pipe form, there's absolutely no danger to you. It's not going to dislodge itself and be, become fibrous in the, in the atmosphere. Okay, so again, so I, uh... just leave it, leave it undetected. If you do want to go up in your attic, you could put some plywood sheeting up on on the two by six framing and and have a solid purchase to stand on, so you're not disrupting, you know, the the insulation. And the insulation itself isn't great unless you have a respirator on, because that's fiberglass, and you don't want to inhale that stuff either. It's nowhere near as dangerous as asbestos. But, you know, do a little research, poke around on the internet, get an idea of what it looks like. They show pictures of what is and what isn't on websites all the time. And it'll just kind of it, it'll it'll eradicate your fears once you know what it really. Well, in fact, like. a great website to go to is our, our friends at the EPA. Uh, if yeah. you just go to epa.gov forward slash asbestos, yeah. <laughs> they have pictures, and I know it's it just kind of freaks you out. But um, but yeah, thanks and a, for, and a good rule of thumb, obviously, yeah. when doing any kind of work around your house that involves demolition or mm-hmm. or you know removing old stuff, just put a mask on for starters, always. If there's any airborne particulates when you start bashing in a wall, you're just going to want to have on at least a, a um, paper mask, if not a couple of cans on, you know, the, the more heavy-duty respiration okay. Uh, device. Okay. You know? Some other things that we can do to make our home healthy right now. Um, I mean, speaking of breathing and, of course, allergies, and, uh, you know, that's going to be kind of heightened for a lot of folks as, as spring uh, 
comes on in, keeping the pollen out. I mean, during the hay fever season, you can shake or brush off um, any outerwear like your coats or whatever, and then just keep a brush and wet wipes handy to clean pets' fur and feet so that, again, you aren't bringing that in. It's another way just to kind of keep the entryway uh, pollen free. Yeah, and, and, you know, to that point, uh, hard, you know, the, people say, why, you know, if we have allergies, what can we do? The most important thing, I think, is to get rid of old carpet that's in your home. Mm-hmm. That basically, if, I don't know if you've ever pulled carpet back in a house that has. Oh, I know, I have. There's, yes, there's, you it's know, gross. Always just it looks like a beach. There's so much it's sand terrible. dirt on the floor yeah. underneath it. So if you if you're prone to you know any kind of allergies, that would be a good first start. Get the carpet out, really vacuum clean it up, and start over. Either keep it as a hardwood floor, or you, you know replace the carpet, but vacuum thoroughly, wash the floor. Let it dry, and then you put your new carpeting down. Or how about adding mats on both sides of the doorway? Um, there's this thing called water hog mats. If you go to the website plowandhearth.com, it's a great way to uh, – it's a it's a – basically a double-length washable matting, and it, it, it basically traps um, any of the uh, allergens before it gets tracked into your house. Yeah, great idea. So, now, when you use the mats, you've got to consider them to be just like bath mats. You yeah, know, you, can't just you can hose them, them down. Hose them. Can't be, they can't be sitting in the wet all the time. No, no, no. Outside. Take them outside, hose them down, let them dry out, and bring them. But, but water hog mats, have you seen these? They're, they're really cool. And just go to plowandhearth.com. They're for about, I don't know, 40 bucks or so. Okay. So uh, as we uh, wind our way into hour two, do you believe in fairies? Well, uh, it depends. Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that. It dep- I mean, I believe in the idea and the, the old mythology of it. It's fantastic. Okay. Are they coming around and making, you know, like brushing my teeth while I'm sleeping? Probably not. Probably not? All no. right. Like like the tooth fairy, that kind of thing, you mean? Well, I believe in the tooth fairy. That's usually the tooth- me or my wife, you know, that has to get up and, and put the five bucks under the pillow. Well, I, I believe in, in little winged creatures. Why not? And when we come back uh, in our second hour, we're going to talk about a woman who is uh, a landscape designer, and she's done thousands of gardens that she says uh, will bring nature spirits to your yard. In other okay, words, I would, That's so great. I would, love to, I would love to talk to her. Uh, yeah, and, and she's really, really into it. You have to kind of keep an open mind. Uh, but she says that there's all these things you can do, like you've heard about crystals, you know, bringing crystals to your garden, but a lot of other things to really make your yard a fairy-friendly place. You're listening to Home Wizards as we work our way into Hour 2 of Ways to Help Improve Your Home, Improve Your Life. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole. Corny, take us there. We 